trafficking is an issue, particularly if you're going to think about prevention and protection, that crosses multiple government agencies, whether we're talking about Cambodia or we're talking about the United <coughs> States. Um, it's a certainly a justice issue, um, but it's also an education issue, it's a labor issue, it's a health health issue, it's a social service issue, um, and coordinating within governments across all of those areas um, is quite daunting. Um, and most governments don't have very good coordination mechanisms um, for addressing gaps that fall between those cracks. So the silos of lack of coordination is endemic, I think, in the field um, to the detriment of good counter-trafficking um, activities. Um, second area I wanted to talk about though, was um, this tension between the focus on sex trafficking and the focus on forced labor. Um, and I think, as others have mentioned, the uh, faith-based community um, has tended to focus more on sex trafficking. Um, the, I think to some extent the left-right coalition keeps together as long as the particular focus is on sex trafficking. Um, of whether you're a, you believe that it's a sin or you believe that women's empowerment requires them to be able to make free choice, you can really cease the problems with sex trafficking. Um, I think the left-right coalition is not anywhere in place, frankly, with regard to forced labor. Um, and, that, and part of the problem is that the line between Trafficking, forced labor, um, and exploitive labor is a very fine-tuned one. Um, and it, I think we see it in the Cambodia case um, where one could be as outraged over child labor working in sweatshops as one is about child labor in brothels. Um, and yet we tend not to have the same level of attention to one as we do to the other as an area that re requiring um, international attention. Um, one is perhaps not, you, you should avoid, you should try to find ways children can stay in school, um, but not necessarily calling on a full engagement at the, um, at the symmetry kinds of levels. Um, it gets even murkier when we're talking about adults. Um, whether the adult working in the sweatshop in Los Angeles um, that I visited with a group of labor inspectors um, is voluntary labor or forced labor. And if it's forced labor, is it trafficking? Um, in this, these cases um, in which we know that a lot of human smuggling um, becomes indentured debt bondage um, where people are not necessarily working in places or doing things that they had intended to or would have done if they um, had total mobility and freedom um, to be able to respond to their own economic needs. Um, but we also see very highly exploitive labor practices um, throughout our economy and certainly the economies of, of many countries uh, that are on the one hand perhaps better than what might have been the alternative if people had stayed home, whether that home was in a rural area um, and, have, and then the person moves into an urban area of their country of origin or migrates overseas and is working at much higher wages, um, but where objectively the labor conditions are such that they're highly exploitive. Um, so th those lines, because they're hard to draw, I think make the issue of forced labor a much more difficult one um, for governments to engage in, for faith-based organizations um, to engage in. Um, how much do you, um, as a faith-based organization, um, try to st curb illegal migration, where that is an avenue towards what can easily become forced labor? Um, and where do you draw those lines is very difficult.